Hello, this is Stephen Ma with the School of Maths here at UNSW. In this video, we're going to be looking at question 28 from topic 5 in discrete maths. So this is a graph theory question, and it's about planar graphs. So if you look here, we've got six different planar graphs. Um, so right, so here's a planar graph, here's another one, here's another one. And each of them have a special region uh, labelled with an asterisk. And uh, so the question is about uh, planar graphs, their regions and their duals. So the first part of the question says, find the degree of the region marked by this asterisk. So the first issue is, well, okay, if you've got a region, what is its degree? And the answer is the degree is equal to the number of edges in the boundary of the region. So let's think about what that means. So in this first graph here, this is the region in question, and we want to know its degree. So we need to look at the number of edges in the boundary of this region. So the boundary of this region is going to be given by starting, I mean, you could start either at this vertex or this vertex, it doesn't matter which one. And you go from here all the way up here, that's one edge. And then you go all the way back down to the beginning. You've, tra you've covered the boundary that way. And you've also covered two edges. So the degree of this region must be two. So now let's look at this one. Here we have a region and its boundary seems to be made up of just one edge. So the degree there would be one. For this region, we have four edges like that. So the degree is four. For this region, now this is a little bit different, right? So this region is sort of the outside of the graph, so to speak. So what's its boundary? Well, what you do is you just take something which goes on the outside. So this is on the outside, this is on the outside, and this is on the outside. So the boundary here is given by three edges, so the degree there is three. Now this graph here looks a little trickier because we only have one region and it's the outside. So how do we work out the degree of its boundary or even in fact what its boundary is? Well we just start with any vertex which is necessarily a vertex on the boundary and we traverse the boundary. So to do that we go from here to here, then we go from here to here and we'd have to go back again. So that means we've counted this edge twice and then we'd have to go from here to here and then we go back again so we've counted that edge twice and then we have to go back to the start which means we've counted this edge twice so if you think about it what's happened is we've gone from here up to here so that was counting the edge once counting the edge once then we've had to go back again so that counts a second time and we have to go up here that's once, and then we have to go back down again, that's once, and then we have to return, so that's once. So in total, we've got six edges. So when you're doing this, some of the edges may be counted twice. And that's exactly what we'll see here. So here the region uh, is not an exterior region, but there are these funny dangly edges here, and they're going to contribute twice to the boundary. So we can start with any edge, right? So let's say, say we started with this edge and this vertex, and we want to look at the boundary. Well, from here, we might decide to go all the way up here, and then we'd have to go back again. So that would be one, and that would be one. Then from here, we might decide to go from this vertex to that vertex. So that would be one. Then we go from here to here, one, but we have to go back again, one, then we can go from here to here, that's one, and we go from here to here, one, back again, one, and then all the way back to the start, which is one. So what you see here is that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges in the boundary. Now, when doing this, you may think, well, maybe I could double up again, you know, maybe here I could decide to go backwards and end up getting 18 or something like that. So the important thing here is that we used the edges 
the least number of times necessary. So we didn't make any unnecessary moves with the edges, and that's how we got the degree of the region. Okay, so now the second part of the question is, find the sum of the degrees of the regions. So in the first part of the question, what we did was we found the degree of these regions that were labeled. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna label the regions we already found with their degrees. So here it was two, it was one, it was four, three, six, and nine. So for this first graph here, we need to write down the degrees for each region. So here we have a region, its boundary is this one there and one there, so that's two. This region is one there and one there, so that's two. And for the outer region, we have one there and one there, so that's two. For this one, we already got this region. This region in here is clearly just a triangle, so its degree is three. And then the external region, well, if we go from here to here, that's one. From here to here, that's one. From here to here, that's one. From here to here, that's one, so that's four. For this region here, uh, we're done for the external region. Well, we go from here to here, one, here to here, one, here to here, uh, one. So, so far we've got three. From here to here, one, so that's four. From here to here, one, that's, that's five. But now we need to go back, six, seven, and then we need to go back to the start, eight. So the degree of that region is eight. Uh, here, we've already labeled the external region. These internal ones are all triangles, so it's easy to see they're all three. Here there's only one region, namely the external region, so we don't need to do anything more. Here we've already labeled the internal region, so we just have to worry about the external one. But that's just you go from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. So that's three. So now we know the degrees of each of these regions, we can work out the sum of the degrees. So here we have two plus two plus two plus two, that would be eight. Here we have three plus one plus four, that would be eight. Here we have four plus eight, that's 12. Here we have three four times, that's 12. Here we just have six, and here we have nine plus three, that's 12. So those are the sums of the degrees of the regions. So now we come to part C of this question which is about the duals of these planar graphs. Now, duals do not always exist. They only exist if you've got a planar graph. But what's more, the dual depends upon how you draw that planar graph in the plane. So what's the basic idea of duals? The basic idea is that the dual of a graph comes about when you swap the regions with the vertices. So here we have a graph. And it has four regions. So let's label these regions R1, R2, R3, and R4. Now in the dual, each one of these regions is going to correspond to a vertex. So let's draw those. So let's say we have these four vertices corresponding to each region. R1, R2, R3, and R4. Okay, so far, so good. But we've only got vertices, we don't have edges. So in the dual of a graph, you have an edge between two vertices each time the original two regions were adjacent and separated by an edge. So here R1 is adjacent to R2 and they're separated by an edge. So we draw an edge between R1 and R2. Likewise, R2 is separated from R3 and they're separated by an edge. So we draw an edge there. And again, R3 is separated from R4 by an edge. And R1 is separated from R4 as well by an edge. Now you may say, well look, it kind of looks like R2 is adjacent to R4, which is kind of true. But they're separated not by an edge, they're separated by a vertex. So when we're drawing the dual, dual graph, we do not consider R2 to be adjacent to R4, precisely because there's no edge separating them. So this is our dual graph for that graph. And what you'll notice is if you look at the degrees of every vertex here, well the degree of R1 is 2, the degree of R2 is 2, the degree of R3 is 2, and the degree of R4 is 2. And that corresponds exactly to the degrees of the regions in the original graph. So let's try to do the same thing again here. So here we've got a graph which has three regions, so its dual has to have three vertices. 
Again, let's label the regions. Let's call that R1, R2, and R3. So let's say we have R1, R2, and R3. And now we want the edges. Well, R3 is clearly adjacent to R2 because they have this edge separating them. So we can say there's an edge there. R1 is also adjacent to R2, so there's an edge there. And R1 is not adjacent to R3 because even though they're separated by a vertex, there's no edge which separates them. But now there's sort of a question. Have we really uh, finished the dual graph? Well, there's something funny going on here with R2, right? And there's also something funny going on here with R3. Its degree is 3, so the degree of this should also be 3. And R2, its degree is 4, so its degree should also be 4. But so far we've only got 2 here and 1 here. Well, the thing about the dual is that you get an edge every time there's an edge separating two regions. So here there's one edge separating R3 and R2, so that gave us one edge. But here there's also a second edge separating R3 and R2, so that should give us a new edge. And here there's a third edge separating R3 and R2, so that should give us another edge. And with that in mind, we now actually have the, the correct degrees for everything. That's 3, that's 4, and that's 1. So now let's look at this graph. There's only two regions, so we only need two vertices. This internal region, which we'll call R2, is separated from the external region by one, two, three, four edges. So we expect R2 to be connected to R1 by four edges. And that definitely sorts R2 out, because then R2 has degree four, which corresponds to the degree of the region R2. But there's still something left going on with R1. And what it is, is that this edge here actually separates R1 from itself. So R1 is adjacent to itself by this edge. So what we do is we draw a loop connecting R1 to itself, and that corresponds to that edge there. And again, we have another edge here doing the same thing. So we draw another loop, and that gives us the extra edge that we needed for R1. So now R1 has degree 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which is what we expected, and everything's fine. Now, you may have noticed something funny with this graph. I deliberately drew the second loop here. I could have drawn the second loop inside there, so I could have done this. So this would also be a perfectly valid representation of the dual. And the way you draw the dual can affect things. I mean, you may want to take the dual again, and your question is, if I draw the dual of this, will I get this graph back? If I draw the dual of this, will I get this graph back? Well, you won't get exactly the same graph because these duals are slightly different. So that's an oddity of duals. Now let's come to this graph. So here we have, again, well, now we have four regions, so we draw four vertices. Let's call the regions R1, R2, R3, and R4. It should be R3. R1 is definitely connected to every other region by exactly one edge, so we have that. R3 and R4 are connected, R3 and R2 are connected, and R2 and R4 are also connected. So we could draw an edge there. We could have also drawn it along there. But one of the reasons we didn't do that is that it wouldn't be obvious that we got a planar graph. Whereas if we draw it like this, then it's clear that we have a planar graph. Now let's come to this one. So this one only has one region, so it clearly only has one vertex. But it has a number of edge se edges separating it from itself. So it has, in fact, 
three edges separating it from itself. So we could draw this as its dual. And that would be fine, but you could also come up with some other options. This would also be perfectly valid. And this would also be perfectly valid. So this leaves us with our final graph. Again, so now there are two uh, regions. So there are two vertices in the dual. And this internal region, R1, is connected to the external region by that edge, also by that edge and that edge. So we need three connections between them. But R1 is also separated from itself by these uh, internal dangly edges. So we need three loops there. And if we do that, we get the correct degrees, as you can see. Okay, so these are the jewels of the various graphs. So now we come to part D of this question, which asks us to verify Euler's formula for each of these graphs. Now, Euler's formula is a formula for planar graphs. And what it says is that if you take the number of vertices, subtract the number of edges, and then add in the number of regions, you'll always get the number two. So let's verify that in this case. Now the question's a bit ambiguous here. It doesn't say whether or not we're verifying Euler's formula for the dual or whether we're verifying it for the original graph. So we'll do both. So if we look at this original graph, we've got two vertices. So for the top graph, V is equal to two. We've got one, two, three, four edges. So E is equal to four. And we have one, two, three, four regions. So R is equal to four. So V minus E plus R, well, the E and the R cancel each other out and you get two. So Euler's formula is definitely true for this top graph. For the second graph here, underneath it, the dual graph, well, V, there's four vertices now. Uh, there's four edges and there's two regions which is not particularly surprising, right? Because the vertices and the regions get swapped. So V minus E plus R is two. For the second graph here, we have one, two, three vertices. We have one, two, three, four edges. And we have three regions. So V minus E plus R well, the V and the R give us 6, and we subtract the E, we get 2. So Euler's formula is correct here. Let's look at this third graph here. So the number of vertices for the top graph is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The number of edges is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we expect them to cancel, and we have exactly two regions, which is just as well, because then V minus E plus R is again 2. For this graph, how many vertices do we have? We have four, the number of regions. I've done this backwards, but anyway, so the number of regions is also four, and the number of edges is one, two, three, four, five, six, which again is good because eight minus six is two. So we have B minus E plus R is two. This graph here we have one, two, three, four vertices. The number of edges is one, two, three. And the number of regions is one. And so V minus E plus R is again two. And then we come to this final graph. The number of vertices is one, two, three, four, five, six. The number of edges is well, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, same number, and the number of regions is two. So again, B minus E plus R is two. All right, so that's how you do question 28.